Hello everyone. Um, I thought I'd start this afternoon by just recapping what we started on Springs Before Christmas because it was ages ago and um, probably didn't come that easy some of the questions. Okay, don't worry about the the one try to put the picture up for me. That's, that's a little bit more difficult than maybe we need to do. Okay, so um, we had this formula uh, that to find the force exerted by a spring, it was lambda x over L, where lambda is the elastic modulus, sort of a measure of how stiff the spring is. X is the extension, and L is the natural length of the spring before it was stretched. Okay, and I gave you a couple of questions of just summing in values here for F, lambda, X, and L. Okay, so I thought we'd start by just going over um, a couple of questions, sort of standard questions on that. Okay, so in this question, we've got a spring with elastic modulus of 90 newtons, natural length of 0 0.8 meters, and we're gonna calculate the extension when a mass of six kilograms is applied. Feel free to pause the video, by the way, and try as many of these as you can on your own. Okay, right, so first job, is to work out the force of the six kilogram mass, which is 58.8 newtons, six times 9.8. And if the spring is in equilibrium, what we can say is that the force upwards is also 58.8 newtons. Okay, it's not going anywhere. It's just sort of resting in that position. Okay, so the force from the spring must be equal to the weight pulling down. Okay, then using our formula of F equals lambda X over L, we know the force in the spring has to be 58.8 newtons. We've got a lambda value of 90. Don't know what the extension is yet, but I do know the natural length was 0 0.8. Okay, I like to set my diagrams up like this, where I can see the, where the natural length was and then the extra extension is down here. Okay rather than sort of call it total length which doesn't really help because we're interested in l and x okay and we're trying to find x in this case right if you bring the 0 0.8 up and multiply and then divide by 90 you should get an extension here of 0 0.523 meters if you tried it yourself okay so that's a nice simple question it's in equilibrium the force from the spring upwards is equal to the weight and then put the numbers into our formula, okay? Right, this next one's a bit trickier. There are two springs attached to each other, okay? One of them's got elastic modulus of 60 newtons and a length of 1.4, that's the red one. And the other's got an elastic modulus of 70 newtons and a natural length of 0 0.6, okay? Uh, and now they're connected to each other and they're fixed three meters apart. But the key thing here is that the spring's natural length is only two meters between them. All right. So that means that between the two springs, we've got this one meter extension here, which the springs are not really happy about. Okay. So they're both going to pull back on each other. Um, and then depending on the stiffness, one will extend further than the other okay you cannot assume that they're just half and half extension half a meter for one half a meter for the other because one of them is stiffer than the other one of them is longer than the other is a bit more complicated than that okay so what we need to do is to come up with some expressions so we've got lambda and we've got l and then this dotted line here represents where the natural length would end so this is 1.4 meters so the red one has extended by x okay now we can't call we can't say x for this one as well because that would be confusing that would be implying that they have extended by the same amount okay so we're going to need a, an expression there instead well if the total extension is one meter and the red one is extended by x that leaves us one minus x for the blue one so if the red one extended by 0 0.8 meters, the blue one only extended by 0 0.2. If the red one extended by 0 0.7, then the blue one's only extended by 0 0.3, okay? So whatever x is, the blue one is extended by one minus x. And then we can say that where these two forces, uh, where these two springs meet, 
there are forces acting that way and that way and those two forces are equal okay it's in an equilibrium position you see it's at rest it's it's everything settled so those two forces are equal right and then we can sort of start using our formula so we've got f equals lambda x over l for the red one and we've got f equals lambda x over l for the blue one and remember the two forces are equal because we're in equilibrium so we can put those two things equal to each other okay got a bit of room so what we can say then for the red uh, spring we've got lambda 60 x over 1.4 and that's equal to for the blue one lambda which is 70 now x for the blue one we call that 1 minus the red x remember we can't call them both x that would be confusing and wrong over 0 0.6 the natural length there um, we'll have to expand out the top so that gives us 60x over 1.4 is equal to 70 minus 70x over 0.6 right if you bring the 0 0.6 up there and multiply and you take the 1.4 over there and multiply so multiplying by each other <coughs> each other's denominators what you'll end up with is 0 0.6 lots of 60x on the left and 1.4 lots of 70 minus 70x on the right so that's 36x on the left 98 minus 98x on the right let's just multiply them out move the minus 98x to that side add it on and you get 134x which equals 98 and you can get from there that x equals 0 0.731 remember, now remember x is the extension of the red one so 0 0.731 there and what would that be 0 0.269 because they've got to add up to 1 Okay, and remember those values are dependent on how long the springs were to start with and how stiff they are Okay. That's quite a common question, having two springs pulling on each other. Okay, so a nice little reminder there. Right, okay, what we're moving on to is the amount of energy stored in a spring. Okay, so you're going to need to pause and make notes as we go along here. <clears throat> okay, probably going to take a little while to get through this. Right, okay, any energy that's stored in a spring, and we call it elastic energy, is coming from the string actually being stretched when you stretch a spring you're doing work okay now the work you're doing those jewels that you're doing they've got to go somewhere they go into the spring because if you let the spring go it's going to snap back to its natural length and that takes work so you put work in by stretching it or squashing it compressing it and that energy is stored then until the spring gets back to its natural length Okay, so any stretched or, or compressed spring is stored in what's called elastic energy. Now we know from much earlier on in the year that work done is force times distance. And we can say that that's the same as integrating the force with respect to the distance. Okay, sort of like finding the area under a, a force distance graph, if you like. Okay. You don't need to really understand the nuts and bolts of, of where that comes from, but integrating force with respect to distance is, is pretty much the same as doing force times distance. Now, that means we're integrating our expression for force, so lambda x over L, with respect to x. So in this case, lambda is a constant, the uh, elastic modulus, L is a constant, it's the natural length of the spring, and X is the variable. So really we're only integrating the X part, and when you integrate X, you get X squared over 2. So what you end up with is lambda X squared over 2L plus a constant, 
But that constant will disappear because if the spring is not extended at all, so if x is zero, there's no elastic energy in the spring. So when x is zero, the work done is zero, the elastic energy stored is zero, so that constant is zero. So you haven't got to worry about the constant. And what you end up with is this expression that the elastic energy stored in the spring is lambda x squared over 2L. Okay, And if you just remember that expression, you don't really need to know where it comes from. But it's lambda x over L all integrated with respect to x. Okay, And lambda x and L are all the same things as they were before. Right, so some sort of nice easy questions. This is just putting numbers in for now. Okay, so find the work done stretching a spring with an elastic modulus of 80 newtons. So lambda equals 80, a natural length of 1.6, and we're extending it by 0.5. Okay, stretching it by 0.5 meters. So the elastic energy or the work done to do that is lambda x squared over 2L, so that's 80, oops, times 0.5 squared over 2L, so 2 times 1.6, oops, 1, 1.6, and that should come out as 6.25 joules. Okay, we're not extending it by very far, it's roughly a third of its length longer, so you're not doing a massive amount of work to stretch that spring. Okay, and 80 newtons is not a particularly stiff string spring, though that value there can go into the hundreds for a very stiff spring that is tough to stretch or compress. Okay, here's another one. Uh, feel free to pause the video and have a go yourself. A man does 50 joules of work stretching a spring of natural length 0.8 meters and elastic modulus of 180 newtons how long is the spring now? So this time we've got the work done. We know how much energy is going into the spring. We've got the natural length and we've got the elastic modulus lambda. And we've got to work out the extension and then the total length. So lambda is 180. The elastic energy is 50, or the work done. L is 0.8. And we need to find x first. So 50 equals... 180x squared over 2L, which is going to be 1.6. Uh, working that through, you get 80 equals 180x squared. Divide by 180, do your square root in, and you get that x is 0.6 recurring metres, or if you prefer, two-thirds of a metre. Okay. So that's the extension, that's how much we st uh, stretched the spring by. But remember it was 0 0.8 metre to start with and we're finding how long the spring is now. So 0 0.8 plus the extra 0 0.6 recurring gives us 1.46 recurring okay, metres. Total length of the spring now. Okay. Another question. So a couple of parts to this one then. I've got a diagram as well here. This is quite a common exam question actually, and it, it's not too bad. Okay, a spring of elastic modulus 50 newtons, natural length 0 0.6 is compressed to a length of 0 0.2 by applying a force to a block of mass three kilograms as shown below. Calculate the magnitude of the force for part A. Okay. Right. So we've got a length at the minute of 0 0.2 metres, and that's because it's being compressed by this force F, and we're in equilibrium, so the f spring must be pushing back with an equal force F. Okay. Now to find F, remember, from earlier on, we need lambda, we need L, and we need x. Well, we know lambda is 50. We know that L was 0 0.6. 
and if the spring at the minute is 0 0.2 meters long we also know the extension or the compression remember it works both ways must be 0 0.4 it was it was 0 0.6 meters long now it's only 0 0.2 meters long it's been squashed by 0 0.4 meters okay so the force is lambda 50 times x 0 0.4 over 0.6 okay so 50 times 0.4 is 20 and 20 divided by 0.6 is 33.3 .3 newtons per curium okay so that's part a that's how much force would be needed to compress the spring by 0.4 meters Right, part B says that the force is released and to calculate the velocity of the block when the spring reaches its natural length. Right, okay. So when the spring was compressed, we put energy into the spring. We did work and that work is being stored in the spring and we can calculate that. So the elastic energy, remember this is lambda x squared over 2L so 50 times 0.4 squared over 2L, well the natural length was 0.6, so that gives us 1.2. Check it in your calculator, you get 6.6 .6 recurring joules of elastic energy stored in the spring. Right, then we release the force, and naturally the spring wants to get back to its natural length. When it gets back to its natural length, there will be no more elastic energy in the spring. It's only got elastic energy when it's either stretched or compressed. When it's at its natural length, it is neither of those things, so it stores no energy. So those 6.6 .6 joules of energy must get transferred. Okay. Now we're on a level surface, so GPE is not an issue, but it will be later on in some questions where we're working in a vertical plane. The only place the energy can go is kinetic energy moving the block. We assume that the spring is light and doesn't really come into those calculations. So the only thing that can have kinetic energy in this question is the three kilogram block. So when we transfer that into kinetic energy then, so all 6.6 .6 recurring joules go to kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, remember, is a half mv squared. Uh, we know the mass is 3 kilograms, so 1.5 V squared equals 6.6 .6 recurring. If you divide by 1.5 and square root, you get a velocity of 2.11 meters per second, assuming that there's no friction. Otherwise, if there was friction, we would have to do force times distance for the work done against friction and take that away from the 6.6 .6 recurring joules. Because what we would be saying then is not all of the elastic energy got converted to kinetic. Some of it was used up working against friction, force times distance. But we'll assume for this question that it's frictionless. Okay. Um, you can calculate the velocity of the three kilogram block at any point. But at this moment in time, there's no elastic energy in the spring because we got back to our natural length. If we were still slightly compressed, some of the 6.6 .6 joules would still be stored as elastic energy okay and you would have to take that into account in your workings okay right next question this is working in the vertical plane now okay so this is a little bit more complicated because we have to take into account sort of other forms of energy as well feel free to pause the video and have a go yourselves okay i'm just going to keep talking but pause, have a go, write down the question and so on, and then press play when you're ready. Okay, so for this question, we've got something hanging from the ceiling. So let's get a nice diagram in first. Um, it's not a very good start because it's not even a straight line. So here's our spring. And we've got a block on the end, and the block is five kilograms. And five kilograms when you convert it to a weight rather than a mass, mg gives you 49 newtons. 
and our spring has been extended. So it was 1.2 meters long. So if I sort of mark this as 1.2 meters, there was our natural length and separately then I'll mark on the extension. We don't know what that is yet, but there's our extension. Okay. And the block is in equilibrium, so that makes it easier for us because we can say that the force acting upwards from the spring on the block must also be 49 newtons. Okay. We've got the elastic modulus, that's 80. We know the natural length was 1.2. We've got the force, we can find the extension. So, F equals lambda x over L. 49 equals 80x over 1.2. Multiply by 1.2, divide by 80, you'll get that x is 0 0.735 meters. So that's the extension. 0.735 meters. Find the distance between the block and the ceiling. So that's the natural length plus the extension. So the total length of the spring now is 1.935 meters. Okay, we haven't done anything with energy yet. We just calculated the extension. But we needed the extension to calculate the energy. So it's important we did that step first. Okay, part B then. The block is pulled down so that it is 2.5 meters below the ceiling. In other words, we're extending it even further. Okay. Calculate the velocity of the block when it passes the equilibrium position. So we're pulling the block down to 2.5 meters, then we are releasing it and letting it shoot back upwards. Okay, converting that elastic energy which is stored in the spring into well kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy because as the block rises it needs to gain GPE okay and there will still be some energy stored in the spring as well so let's have a look at the workings so let's have a look first of all at when we extend it to its maximum length for this question so that is when we are at 2.5 meters which is when we put it as far down as we can. So we've got our natural length of 1.2, which gets us, let's say, to about by there. And because we're down to 2.5 altogether, we've got an extension of 1.3. Okay. And we can calculate at this moment in time how much energy is stored in that spring. So the elastic energy is lambda x squared over 2L, so that's 80 times 1.3 squared over 2L, so 2.4. I can work out that there is 56.3 recurring joules of energy stored in that spring right now. Okay. Then it says the block is released and it returns to its equilibrium position. Well, we calculated the equilibrium position here, didn't we? Okay, the equilibrium position, what this spring naturally would do in this situation is have an extension of 0.735 meters and have a total length of 1.935. So, if I just copy this, don't need all of this information so I'll delete some bits as well I get rid of those 49s we didn't need them okay so we've gone from a total length of 2.5 and an extension of 1.3 to a total length of 1.935 and an extension of 0.35735 so the block has well it's done two things it's raised by 0.565 meters. Okay, that's just comparing 2.5 and 1.935. Okay, and also it's gained some velocity. And it's still got some elastic energy. I know it's still got some uh, elastic energy stored in the spring because I've still got this extension of 0.735 here. Okay. So, how much kinetic energy does it have? Well, the kinetic energy is 
the energy it had when it was extended to its fullest minus any gravitational potential energy that it gained and minus any energy that's still stored in the spring. Okay, so that's 56.3 recurring minus, okay, so mgh. Well, mg is 49, looked that out earlier, so 49 times 0.565 so some of the energy we had some of the 56.3 has been converted to GPE some of the 56.3 recurring is still stored in the spring how much we'll have to work it out so lambda x squared and in the equilibrium position remember x is 0.735 squared over 2L 2.4 okay just about squeeze that on if you put that into your calculator you should find that there is 10.64 joules that's been converted to kinetic energy when you take out the GPE that we've put into the block when you take off the elastic energy that's still in the spring and hasn't been converted to anything there's still 10.64 joules left so then we can say that a half mv squared for this block is 10.64. So that's 2.5, half of m, v squared is 10.64. Divide by 2.5 and square root, the block is traveling at 2.06 meters per second. Okay. Um, if we pulled the block further down, now this is I guess sort of obvious the, the more you pull it down the more elastic energy you store and even though some of it gets converted back to GBE because you pulled it further back it's gonna go faster okay 